Hey, welcome everyone. Um, slides are finally working, so I hope we can, uh, can start. Uh, thanks for coming to this session. It's about automating uh, a big data platform using, um, uh, using Jenkins. Um, and I'm going to tell you about the past, present, and future about the big data platform at, uh, at Sonoma. Um, and obviously the way that Jenkins ties in into serving the elephant. Um, so uh, about me, I'm uh, Sander Kieft. I'm a manager of core services at, uh, at Sanoma. Um, I'm responsible for like, all common components um, that, um, that we run uh, under which the, the big data platform. Uh, Sanoma is a publishing company based in the Netherlands and Finland. Uh, we publish about 100 magazines. The two major newspapers in, uh, in Finland uh, have five television stations in both the Netherlands and, uh, and Finland, we run about 200 websites and about 100 mobile uh, applications. And especially the last two generate a lot of data, a lot of advertising data, a lot of user data, uh, a lot of uh, web analytics, uh, behavioral targeting. And we use our big data platform to, um, uh, to refine that. So we started, uh, and when we started uh, back in 2008, all those systems, so the web analytics system, the advertising system, all in itself produced enough in, uh, actionable insights for us to, to use. Um, and we didn't really have a, a BI uh, heritage. Uh, the, the data source were already too big to really use in a low level form, uh, and we combined the main metrics uh, in like Excel and, uh, and used those for, uh, uh, for reporting. But in, um, uh, and we were playing around doing some ad hoc analysis on, on log files uh, with, um, uh, with Hadoop. So, well, it's an interesting technology, but well, definitely not fit for, uh, for production yet. Uh, and then early 2009, uh, Hive came. Um, and, uh, who of you is familiar with, uh, with big data? Okay. Who's familiar with, with Hadoop? Okay. Uh, who's familiar with Hive? Well, still, okay. Um, so uh, Hive is like a SQL layer on top of Hadoop. So it really makes uh, accessing the data on Hadoop much easier and um, fit for a much broader audience. Uh, and in 2010, we, we got the question for uh, building a product that we felt would really benefit from having um, Hadoop as a platform powering, uh, uh, powering it. So, um, uh, because not everyone in the in the room um, is familiar with big data, just a brief um, uh, a brief introduction. With that um, uh, that project we had, we felt that we could model like the data like you do with a BI project and create um, the um, uh, the reports tailored for uh, for the user. But that means like throwing away some of the uh, of the data. Uh, but we felt that we we really had to keep all of the data as we collected it because we, did not, we, we, we knew what questions we want to answer now, but we didn't know what que questions we want to answer um, tomorrow. So we took this quote from, uh, from Edward Ning, uh, in science, one man's noise is another man's signal. Um, also saying that what I, f uh, what I can extract from the data is, is maybe less than some other guy that's coming in tomorrow. Uh, um, so t a traditional BI setup would take all this data, um, and refine it in a way that it goes to report, and the rest of the data goes, uh, goes to waste. Whereas with a big data approach, you pour this data uh, into what's called like a data lake. From that, you create these operational reports. But this also allows you to take a bucket, go to the lake, get out some of the data, and take it home for further analysis. Or feel like other operational data warehouses um, uh, from that. Um, and when is data big data? So from the marketing uh, machines of the, the big companies came like the four Vs uh, about volume, variety, and velocity. So volume meaning like the sheer terabytes or petabytes of data you're, you're using. Variety means both the number of sources, but also like the, the number of data types you're, um, uh, you're ingesting. Uh, and velocity means like the speed at which the data comes in. How real time do you need your, uh, your insights? Does Sanoma have a big data problem? Well, if you look at all these fees individually, nah, I would say Sanoma does not have a big data problem. But the combination of all these factors and the fact that we want to adhere to, uh, to Edward Ning um, uh, meant that we said, okay, we'll 
we'll take this this step. We'll move in um, uh, towards uh, the big data directory, uh, the direction. And these fees got uh, got added uh, as the marketing machines of, of the big companies um, uh, also dived into uh, to big data. What's the definition, or at least the definition we use? Uh, is structured and unstructured data which contains valuable information that cannot be processed by a traditional um, uh, RDBMS or at least not within like acceptable costs. Obviously, you can go to Oracle and say, hey, I want this extra scale um, a cluster for doing my analytics. And they say, yeah, well, no problem. We can process the, the 100 terabytes for you at this cost. But usually that's like more than you're willing to, uh, to pay, or at least for us where like all the individual line items that we collect represent like a really uh, low value. Well, when you're a bank or like a retailer, like every line represents a, a product that someone buys, which is like 100 euros. For us, a banner impression is like oh, uh, dot one one one, uh, oh, dot oh <laughs> is a, a thousandth of, um, uh, of, a, of a euro. Um, so talking about the, the variety and the unstructured, um, uh, structured data being a relational database and like uh, strong integrity, uh, semi-structured meaning like log files and CSV and unstructured meaning like really documents um, and, uh, uh, and images. Where we handle like 80% for us is like semi-structured, it's like log files and, and CSV. 10% uh, is, is structured and 10% is, um, uh, is unstructured. Uh, and I feel that Hadoop is really, really good in processing like the, 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 of the semi-structured. Also, one of the nice things compared to a database is that um, uh, with Hadoop and with Big Data, um, you use schema on read instead of schema on write. So instead of having this really strong schema and the data that comes in, you're mapping against that schema before it's persisted on disk, you now pour the data on the disk and apply the, sch this, uh, the schema when you read the data, which gives you much more opportunities to evolve like your schema or like the, uh, the data you extract from, um, uh, from the log. Um, and it gives you the opportunity of scalability. Whereas with your relational database, you usually have to buy a bigger box, a bigger sun, um, or uh, an, uh, an appliance like, like Teradata or, uh, or Oracle. So it's scale out. Whereas with Hadoop, um, you have local storage. And that's part of the, the power of the system. So you just add machines as your, your data grows, which adds both storing capacity, but also um, uh, processing. Uh, and you just start adding these boxes. So uh, cost will grow uh, linearly and not exponentially with the, the scale out scenario. Um, and Hadoop itself, it came from two papers published by, uh, by uh, Google, uh, the, the GFS paper and the MapReduce paper. GFS describing their global file system or Google file system for, um, uh, for generating the, uh, the web index and MapReduce as a programming paradigm or like algorithm on top of that for um, doing the distributed work and leveraging all these uh, separate machines. It's, a, it's Java based uh, and uh, nowadays there's also more, um, uh, more programming paradigms than just uh, MapReduce. Um, but, uh, so Hadoop provides HDFS and, and MapReduce. Um, and like I said, Hive provides like a SQL layer on top of that, giving easy access to the, uh, to the data. Um, and when we wanted to build this, we not only wanted something that scaled technically, but also scaled organizationally. So we wanted a way for uh, business analysts and for data scientists to be able to help themselves to have like a certain degree of, um, of self-service or being based in Amsterdam, we also consider this to be uh, uh, self-service because yeah, you have to get these enlightening um, ideas from, uh, from the data. Um, and when you look at the chain of, um, of data, so from the source until the, like the inside, we started out with like, self-service only on like, the last two steps. So allowing the business analysts to create the reports to, uh, to facilitate their, um, uh, their user base. Um, and we would do um, uh, the rest. So we started out building this. We did a selection. Uh, you started using ClickView as a front-end product, so that's uh, in-memory analytics and, and reporting. Use Hadoop for the storage and, and high for the, um, uh, as the data warehouse. Uh, and all we needed was glue. We needed to piece this stuff 
um, uh, together. And that's what you traditionally use uh, an ETL tool for. So extract, transform, load, also representing the steps. Um, and there were like two products in the market that in 2010 supported Hadoop or had, had a connected to Hadoop. And we tried, um, uh, we, we went for, uh, for this one. And in the beginning, everything is nice. You have these blocks, it's like a fourth generation language. So you, uh, you just uh, d d d d draw these, um, uh, these flows. And well, the first one goes okay. Second one's already a bit more complicated. Um, but then you get into really complex flows and it becomes really hard to debug. It's becoming really hard to, um, uh, to maintain. Uh, it's uh, somewhat hard to, um, uh, to document or at least to um, document in a way that we developers were, um, uh, were used to. And then comes the scalability issue because like a typical use case for us is read 10,000 or 100 files from FTP location, download them, process them, and then make them available to a user. Um, but having that 10,000 loop iterate over this ETL tool was just too slow. So you try to parallelize, uh, parallelize uh, uh, stuff. So then your flow starts looking like this, which, well, is not that practical. Plus, if you want then to add like this single field, you have to check all these um, uh, components, add like the field, uh, to get it updated, and then you start to write like the code to generate this, and then you know we're completely the wrong way, and uh, you start introducing more shell scripts to take care of this, and then in the end everything blows up in your face because that's just not a maintainable system. You're using the ETL tool to like schedule batch scripts, and that's like um, uh, not gonna gonna work for the long term. So we learned some stuff from that initial iteration, uh, and it was that that Hadoop. And ClickView were in itself really powerful um, uh, tools. But we did not have to approach this as being a BI um, uh, project. We had to take this more as a development um, uh, project. And time progressed. We did create some, some valuable uh, integrations. Um, but we had to do a reset. We had to rethink this architecture and come up with like a better solution for, uh, for doing what we were doing. Um, and we were at a meetup in the Netherlands, a big data meetup, and there was this guy. Back in the day, he was working for Hortonworks, and he just published this book about agile data. Does anyone know this guy, by the way? No? Okay. He's, a, he's a Russell Journey. Um, and um, he said that from that entire flow, you should make everything available to everyone. This is like agile data. Um, really, everyone should be able to um, to publish their uh, their their work, their uh, work uh, flows, and if they really need it badly uh, to extract some of the data, they should not be waiting for you. They should be able to uh, to do it themselves. So just provide them the tools to do it, and in the end, they will um, they will do it. So we thought, ah, okay, that's uh, that's an inter interesting thought, and we needed new glue to then provide to these developers. Um, to be able to, um, uh, to get the data on, on our platform and to be able to process it. And what is it that we, we needed from, uh, from the ETL solution? We need something that could do the processing, or at least kick off the processing. We need something to do the scheduling. We need something to, take off, to look after the data quality, the data lineage, so where is the data coming from, how got it on our cluster, somewhat auditability, uh, versioning, and annotation. Uh, and we looked at a few options some premium ETL tools, some uh, uh, tools from the Hadoop ecosystem. Um, and um, one day we did um, a POC. We, we tried some stuff. And we started with this, one of the best scripts we, um, uh, we used. And um, this was really the fastest way from development time uh, to get the data on the, um, uh, on the cluster. And it only had one limit, uh, one small problem, and there was this bit of code. This is the loop. The, the loop just fell off the, the, the screen, um, which iterates over those 10,000 files, and then does three commands, three Hadoop commands. It creates a directory. It moves the data to Hadoop, uh, and then does an uh, in-place uh, move, which is atomic operation, whereas the put is, uh, is streaming. Um, but those three Hadoop commands all spin up a JVM, all take like 200 milliseconds, so still iterating this loop, 
10,000 times take, uh, takes too much um, uh, takes too much time. So we did a slight alteration of um, of this code, writing it in, a, in a, another script language, but which gave us direct access to running on um, uh, or gave us direct access to the the Java APIs from uh, from Hadoop. Does anyone recognize this? No Python developers in the room. It walks like Python, talks like Python, but is actually Jiten. It's uh, Python, but runs on the um, uh, on the JVM. So it gives you the expressiveness of um, uh, of Python, but it gives you all the power of the the, the Java APIs, and you can just call on uh, the the Java APIs from uh, from Hadoop. So do all the HDFS and uh, and MapReduce uh, operations you uh, you need. Um, so we got the processing part. Now we needed something for scheduling and. We were already using Jenkins. We were using it to build the MapReduce code, which like runs on the cluster, um, and um, this provided a lot of the uh, capabilities we needed. There's like some dependency management. Uh, there's the monitoring. Uh, you can look back at like the jobs. Uh, it scales to multiple nodes. It has like an API. We have this nice uh, status monitor on um, uh, on our wall. It integrates with the um, uh, the code repository. So. This solved like a lot of our um, a lot of our issues. So looking back at like the checklist, Bass and Jiten for um, uh, for the processing, using Jenkins for the scheduling, uh, version control, using Mercurial, moving to Stash, uh, and annotation is now just writing same code and uh, documenting. Um, so uh, even better than uh, having these four four um, G uh, flows. Um, Data lineage and data quality, we still have to look into. Um, it's not a major issue for us. Um, plus, going for the commercial ETL tools, being able to use them at scale, also like took out the advantage of their uh, data quality and uh, data lineage capabilities. So, how do our processes look? We try to use these steps, these stages of moving the data forward. Um, Getting from source, we move everything to the Hadoop file system, so to Hadoop itself. And then we use the power of Hadoop, so the parallel processing there, to then transform it um, into a Hive staging and in the end into Hive, so into the data warehouse. And then it's accessible to, um, uh, to the data analysts. Uh, the data scientists can already start using it when the source data is available on the, um, uh, on the cluster. So Jenkins kicks off the job, the Jiten job, pulls in the data, moves the data to HDFS, then we trigger from uh, Jenkins the job to run to process the data um, and, uh, and make it available in, in Hive. And then the last step, the load, we trigger a load to ClickView. ClickView loads the data either from Hive <laughs> or we push the files um, uh, there. So did this give us the self-service we were looking for? Yeah, it, it, it really. Um, enabled the uh, data of the um, uh, the business analysts to start using this um, a normalized data structure. We don't model it as being a traditional data warehouse with like the star schema or um, uh, the data vault. Uh, we expose like the original source system, but they were really happy could start using the data in a language like SQL that that they knew. Um, so they were really happy. Uh, data scientists could immediately, the second we extracted the data, place it on the cluster, could start using it, could start running analyses on it. Um, and um, uh, having the power of Jenkins, they were also able to schedule the jobs they wanted for uh, feeding like into the recommendation systems they, uh, they're building. Um, and then still there's the possibility to create these data marks or these um, uh, an analytical tables uh, on top of that. So what tools do we use? U and Hive. So U is the Hadoop user interface. We expose this to our, um, to our analyst. They use the SQL interface here to, to, to trigger jobs, to find what queries they need to execute, uh, and then usually they schedule it and uh, push the data to, uh, to ClickView. ClickView is the reporting tool. <coughs> uh, being able to make nice graphs on top of the, um, on top of the data. Um, and uh, for the data scientists, we also expose uh, our, um, our studio. Um, and then there's Jenkins for um, uh, the scheduling. 
Some of the stuff we really like about uh, running Jenkins is the hashing, um, uh, the hash scheduler. Not having to uh, pick like the right time slots for all of our jobs, we can just specify run this job every three hours, and we don't care when. If it's run, running on the first hour, the second, or the third, we don't car care as long as it's being run every three hours. And um, that's really a powerful uh, way for us to load balance uh, Jenkins, but also the, the cluster um, uh, a bit. Um, we use the par parameterized builds. Initially, we really had high, hope for, high hopes for this. Also being a part of the self-service, um, analysts could go in, uh, plug in their uh, requirements for a job to run, and then hit the build, uh, the build button. But in the end, this is not used that much because most of the um, uh, data analysts are going straight to, to you. Or, um, or straight to click view. Um, it's, um, uh, we thought this was a really nice way, but like uh, under, under leveraged. Um, and we have kind of a dirty hack where we use the, um, uh, the Jenkins API, and from click view, we call into, um, uh, into Jenkins to trigger a specific job, um, which then goes to Hadoop. Typical jobs run for like an hour, two hours. Some of the data science jobs run, run for 16 hours and then generate output right into ClickView and then uh, do the reload of the data in the, in the dashboard. Um, for this, we're using the throttle concurrency um, uh, plugin to limit like, the number of concurrent calls uh, ClickView can do. Um, so it can do, I think, about eight uh, concurrent, uh, concurrent calls. And this gives like, a really light usage on, on, on Jenkins anyway. Uh, because we're Jenkins is just kicking off those jobs that then run on uh, on the cluster. Uh, the plugins we use: the Mailer, uh, the LDAP um, uh, plugin, which we're here with our lead developer, uh, told me that we're actually not using that one. I thought we were, but um, um, the matrix authorization strategy and of obviously the, the Mercurial and, and Git um, plugins. We we have this strategy where we really try to limit the number of plugins we. Um, uh, we use. Uh, we also don't allow like data scientists or, or uh, business analysts to add like their own um, uh, plugins for security, for stability, um, and obviously we use the the green balls uh, uh, plugin. So how does this look from an architectural point of view? Uh, we have the sources Jenkins and Hadoop. So the data goes onto Hadoop. There's the scheduled uh, exports going to other systems. There's the um, um, uh, scheduled loads going to, uh, to ClickView. And there's uh, Hive in U for, for ad hoc queries, and then a possibility to, uh, to move those, uh, the data to, um, uh, to either ClickView or, or to RStudio. This is work, working really great for, for, batch, uh, for batch jobs, so stuff that comes in every hour, every day. Um, this is not so good for real time. Uh, and we see more and more of our workload is shifting towards, uh, towards real time. For that, we have our own uh, collecting infrastructure running at AWS, collecting like uh, the events, put it on the event stream, um, and uh, um, then doing a... Um, uh, um, so we have the real-time collector, we move it on uh, to Kafka, we have a, a sync for the data to, um, uh, to Hadoop, Actually, there's first S3 uh, in front of it for, for buffering, uh, and we run Storm for the, um, uh, the real-time uh, processing of the data. Uh, models that are, are made in RStudio or uh, like in, in Scala um, can be executed, and then we have like a serving layer for serving these, uh, this real-time um, uh, data back to our users. So nowadays, we provide these um, uh, first three steps by the, the platform team that maintains the platform and extracts those sources. And from there on, uh, it's free for, um, uh, for everyone to, um, to do what they uh, well, somewhat like on, uh, on our platform. So now, Jiten, Jenkins, Kafka for the event queuing, Storm for the real-time processing, and we're moving to, um, to Yarn, which uh, allows more processing paradigms than just uh, MapReduce. Um, they also uh, support like graph processing or uh, some MPP kind of uh, more workloads. So what use cases do we do? Biggest use case is combining data sets. So combining the web analytics, the advertising data, the behavioral targeting data, 
and uh, using that for, uh, for reporting. Uh, we, ran a, we ran a lot of A-B tests for improving our products. Uh, data from those A-B tests we use for, uh, for analysis. Um, we, uh, we do uh, uh, various ad optimizations, both for the, the, uh, the traffic we buy ourselves, but also for the, the ad sizes we, uh, we serve. Uh, we do various recommendations for the users and for, for products. Uh, and we do some, um, uh, some search optimizations, so online learn to rank and um, search, uh, search suggestions. So our, um, uh, our current state, like I said, mainly for reporting, it's the, the default data platform for, for Sanama, so all the countries use, um, use this. Um, we have about 250 uh, ClickView dashboard uh, users daily, about 40 uh, users on, um, uh, on the Hadoop platform. Um, I think already more than 50 uh, data sources, um, resulting in like more than 150 uh, data, um, uh, data imports and about 400 tables in, uh, in our data warehouse. Doing this with a pretty small team, or at least I think a pretty small team, um, one product owner, three developers as the platform team, and they're facilitating like uh, a 10 data scientists, uh, someone looking after click view, and about 30 uh, business analysts um, uh, in various departments, half uh, some architectural support. Um, and current platform, uh, 55 nodes, 650 terabytes of proficient storage, Depending if a server is down or not, we don't really care. We, uh, um, the entire platform is, is being redundant, so uh, if there's nodes down, we can go in a week later or a month later and, and replace it. Uh, typical nodes, uh, uh, 16 terabytes of, of data, um, uh, 32 gigs or even 48 gigs of, um, of memory. Um, and what's next for us? Uh, we do have some challenges, uh, ranking them uh, security, and that's because we feel that security should always be a priority and we should always strive to improve the, the security. Um, the infrastructure is, a, uh, is somewhat of a, of a challenge because we now run this cluster on-premise in our own uh, co-location space, um, but want to move to like a higher level of support for the network um, for um, uh, some of the utility servers like Jenkins, um, but the current um, uh, way is, um, is holding that back, uh, so we have to do something there, plus we built our platform based on some of the old production servers which now have run out, so we have to start buying new, uh, new machines. Uh, integrating our setup with like other BI systems, we run a lot of SAS, we, we run a lot of BO, um, th those integrations can be better. Jenkins in itself, has a few, few challenges. Um, for us, it's a single point of failure. We're not running the supported uh, CloudBees um, uh, setup, um, but like doing an update when you have like these 16-hour running jobs is a bit annoying because yeah, you sometimes you don't know when a job finishes, so you can say, "Hey, I'm going down for an update," but then you're like waiting there for 16 hours until like this last long-running job finishes before you can finally do. Um, uh, f before the update is then uh, executed, which can be in the middle of the night. Um, and um, another issue can be the, the, the big repositories. We once had a guy that uh, committed like a, a two gigabyte test file to, uh, to the repository. We have about 500 jobs. If they all, they all check out the same repository, so that effectively checked out a two gigabyte file 500 times, which, we, uh, which brought down the, the Jenkins node. Uh, the running upgrades already mentioned and the long running jobs um, going to a more uh, high availability setup is one of the challenges and probably we'll do that by introducing some of the, uh, the build nodes. Um, Self-service I think can even be further improved, making it even easier to, um, to use the data. Uh, data quality and data lineage, um, we have ideas about how to, uh, to do this and mainly have like an early warning system. Uh, using some uh, probabilistic way of, uh, of determining like number of files that come in or, or data volumes. Uh, and now having some of the code in, in Jenkins for ETL and some of it in Scala, um, probably uh, using some uh, pro uh, finding the balance between um, code reuse and, uh, and the fast development times. Um, so, main takeaways. 
Uh, Hadoop and big data can open a lot of opportunities for, uh, for your company. If you're not using it yet, you definitely should, should look into this. Um, and um, there's usually a lot of uh, unleveraged data that, um, that can, be, can be used. Um, it's not a shame to capture more data than you, know you need now. Um, storage is cheap nowadays, processing is cheap. You can always come in next month and you, can, you already have a head start on the data you already have then in, in Hadoop. You can start processing it right away. Um, integrating Hadoop requires developers and developers like to use development tools. They don't like to use ETL, uh, graphical drag and drop, um, and they like these tools like, um, like Jenkins. And for us, Jenkins provides a good enough solution. I'm not saying this is perfect and when you build this yourself, you should use Jenkins, um, but I think it's a, uh, it's a good enough solution. Um, and um, even with big data, you can start small. Uh, in 2010, we started with just four servers, um, and that gives you like uh, enough of uh, an environment to start building this, um, and uh, can uh, can prove your uh, uh, your business case. So, well, then uh, thanks a lot for your time. Uh, slide from the organization. Uh, please give your feedback in the app, and uh, uh, yeah, thanks for your time again. <laughs>